Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and I often get asked, how can I make a herbal extract? So in this video, I'm going to show you two different ways to make a herbal extract for cosmetic use. Before I get started though, I do want to make it really clear that the way of making extracts I'm going to show you today is not the same as the extracts that get provided by larger suppliers with their efficacy data. They use highly proprietary processes and then assay their finished products to make sure they contain a certain amount of active contents. They also have other quality procedures in place that are beyond the home crafter. They also conduct efficacy testing in vitro and in vivo methods to demonstrate and prove the efficacy of their extracts. You can't use their supporting data as if it's sufficient to prove the use of your extracts because you have no way of knowing if your extraction method is the same and in any case if you haven't conducted the efficacy testing you can't use their data to suggest that your extract will have the same performance. Let's take licorice extract as an example and I've got an example of the method that we'll be using today. You could make a licorice extract just like this. But this particular licorice extract is not standardized in components that create the lightening or whitening effect that you can get from more specialty suppliers. It's not the same as a glabridin extract or a dipotassium glycerizinate extract either. Now these have demonstrated efficacy for the materials created by those raw material suppliers. So it's not correct to suggest that your licorice extract would have the same efficacy or results as those more advanced materials. But they can be a great way to add to your product story in the marketplace. You can also purchase small quantities of extracts from soap or craft suppliers instead of making your own. But if you'd still like to go ahead, I'm going to show you how. And I'm going to show you two different methods today. One is a cold process method using ethanol and the other is a heated process that gives you a glycerin based extract at the end. And both of these methods mean you don't need to add extra preservative. So let me show you how. The first one I'm going to show you is using ethanol and this means we can make a cold process product. Making cold process is a good idea if you want to not destroy heat sensitive active constituents but again unless you're assaying uh, you wouldn't be able to make the claim that they're present anyway because you haven't tested for them. To do this I am using undenatured ethanol. I have seen videos where they use vodka uh, or methylated spirits that's not what I'm recommending. You really need to use at least a 95% uh, chemical grade of ethanol as part of this extract to maintain good quality standards. So now in here I have just got 10 grams of green tea. We're gonna make a green tea extract. Uh, and to this I'm going to just add 20 grams of ethanol. And then we need to stir it. Now if you're using other herbs you need to grind them up. This is already in a very fine flake form. Uh, if you get larger leaves or roots you'll need to grind them first using a coffee grinder or other similar device. And you are better to make one kilo or more at a time. I'm showing you really small samples in the lab today but you are better to use larger pots and vessels so that you can create larger quantities of extract just because it is a time consuming process. So I have my ethanol in there and then you need to seal it off really tightly, make it airtight because of course your ethanol will evaporate. And then you need to stir this or shake this, again in a larger vessel you'd need to uh, make sure you appropriately shake it uh, without losing any of your ethanol uh, over the course of at least a week. This is one I prepared a week ago. As you can see, I've made it very airtight. Now we are ready to strain off the ethanol portion. Now I'm using food grade oil filters. You can get these from a hospitality supplier. I have cut them down again to suit my lab size samples that I'm working with here. Uh, but you can, of course, get larger conical strainers that will enable you to do this on a much larger scale.
Now we have our concentrated extract and we need to make this up to the required volume with ethanol and we are making it up to 60% ethanol so that it is very self-preserving. You could make it to 40% ethanol but uh, home crafting this way it's a little riskier with potential contamination so to be absolutely certain this will be self-preserving for at least a three-year shelf life I'm making up to a 60% ethanol extract solution. And then I just add my 40% of water. Give it a little stir and pour it off. And there I have my one in 10 green tea extract. Self-preserving, I'd have at least three to five years shelf life on this product. Keep it capped well. It will never go off. But of course we have a lot of consumers that don't like the use of ethanol in their products and you would be required to list ethanol as one of the ingredients in this particular extract in a finished product in the ingredient listing to be compliant. So let me show you how we can create an extract that will be self-preserving for home crafters. Now again remember this is using a hot process method because we need to create the extract in this way so that we can make it self-preserving. So let me show you how. So in this case I again have 10 grams extract so again you should be doing this uh, in a larger pot so you'd be making at least a kilo at a time uh, if not more. Now we just need to cover this with water And again, we're using the green tea, it comes nicely ground, but if you're using another herb or another root type substance, you will need to grind it first. And some materials are very fibrous, which means sometimes you'll need a lot of water just to cover them. Uh, and if that's the case, then you need to add more water. Uh, usually you need about two times as much water as the herbal extract, but sometimes you could need a lot more than this. And then we need to heat this and gently boil it. We don't want rapid boiling over, but we need to gently boil it for at least a half an hour. Now, you may choose to boil it for two hours. It's usually between half an hour to two hours uh, in the boiling process. Uh, and we do this because we want to extract components from it. So also make sure it's covered so you don't get too much evaporation. Again, a larger pot would make that a lot easier. So now we've got it gently boiling. We just need to leave it for the half an hour. Uh, do come back and check on it. Keep your eye on it. If it starts to evaporate and get too dry, you need to add extra water. It will be okay at the end. You just don't want it too sloppy, but you definitely don't want it boiling dry either. Okay, so here we have our extract that has been boiling away nicely uh, for half an hour, and now we are ready to pour it off and collect the extract. So here we have the concentrated extract and in some cases you may only collect a small amount. We now need to make this up to 20% water. And then make it up to the full 100% with glycerin. Now again, you could use less glycerin if you wanted and still have a self-preserving extract, but especially in a home crafting situation, I'm not going to recommend that, simply because we want to be sure that this product will not have microbial contamination. You are working with herbal substances which are from nature directly uh, and could be prone to microbial contamination in a finished product. We don't want to take that risk, uh, so I have made this method to ensure that it will be totally self-preserving. Then we give it a stir. And we can pour it off into our storage packaging. So there we go, that is how you create 
extracts. So again, we have the cold processed version using ethanol and we have the hot processed version using glycerin, both self-preserving without need for additional preservatives. Now you do need to make sure you have batch to batch consistency, which means every time you create your extract, you should be following exactly the same method. Make sure you record important parameters such as finished product pH, appearance, and of course they're self-preserving so you won't need to worry about microbial content. You saw me prepare small samples today. Ideally, you should be preparing at least one kilo of product at a time to make it time economical for you. But of course, there's plenty of other extracts available out there already. Now remember when you're making these sorts of extracts, you shouldn't be making high-end efficacy claims because you have no evidence to support the active content in these sorts of extracts or their performance without doing additional efficacy testing. You can of course choose to get some efficacy testing done on your extracts and then make sure that testing will yield you in vivo test results that could be used for marketing claims. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up, leave any comments or questions below. This video was created because I do get asked how to make herbal extracts. So if you'd like to see a video on a topic, please let me know. Make sure you also subscribe to get notifications of future videos we release. You never know, it might be one of the topics you've suggested. Happy formulating.